Today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. I'll tell you a little bit more about them later on. With the Shohei Otani contract finally signed and official, the floodgates of MLB free agency should be opening soon. Outside of Japanese superstar ace Yoshinobu Yamamoto, the other overseas name grabbing attention from many teams is that of 2022 KBO MVP Jung-Hoo Lee, an outfielder with defensive and speed upside who is said to be a contact specialist. The thing with South Korean position players is that their transition to MLB usually doesn't come without serious hitches. Ha Sung Kim is a great exception to this rule as he's put together back-to-back -back terrific seasons and even received a gold glove and NL MVP votes in 2023. But more often than not, these KBO signings from overseas usually fail to pan out, especially when it's position players. Even the best that the league has had to offer have failed to make strides in America. 2010 KBO MVP Deho Lee signed for $1 million in 2016. Four-time KBO gold glover Hyun Soo Kim signed for a two-year $7 million deal in 2015. Two-time KBO MVP Young ho Park signed a four-year $12 million deal in 2015. The three of them combined to earn $20 million and play 350 MLB games between them, all of that just to earn negative 0.5 B war all in. To be honest, there's really only one South Korean position player who ever made it click in MLB, and he was so talented that he managed to hang in the league for over 15 years. Over 1,500 games, over 200 home runs, over 150 stolen bases, and 30 wins above replacement in his career, Shin Soo Chu is the gold standard of Korean sluggers, and he also skipped over the KBO entirely, coming to MLB fresh out of high school. His career is remarkable to look back on, and outside of his stellar play, he was also a fantastic human being. And today, we're to tell his whole story. If you enjoy the video, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe to the Jolly Off channel. You can help me hit 100,000 subs. I'd really appreciate it. A common misconception about Shin Su Chu is that he originally played in the KBO, when in fact he skipped over the league entirely. After leading his native country to a World Junior Baseball Championship in 2000, Chu signed an MLB contract right out of high school at the age of 18. After trudging through the minor leagues for five years, Chu made his debut with the Mariners in April of 2005, becoming just the ninth South Korean-born player in MLB history and just the second position player to that point alongside Hee Sop Choi. For reference, Chu would go on to play over 1,300 more games in his big league career compared to Choi. Upon finally reaching the show, the Seattle Mariners gave Chu just 33 plate appearances of run before deciding to abruptly trade him and regretting it later on because that's just what they did on repeat for the entirety of the 2000s. Chu found himself in Cleveland in exchange for first baseman Ben Broussard, who was later traded again for a guy named Tug Hullett. <laughs> Chu bounced up and down from the minor leagues in the ensuing years, and a decade later, he still made note of how difficult it was to be an affiliate player, let alone one in a completely new country. In an interview with the Dallas Morning News in 2019, Chu remarked how he had to forego meals to pay for his newborn son's needs, having to make ends meet with just $350 on a weekly basis. Years later, this contributed to Chu's graciousness and charity towards minor leaguers, including donating nearly $200,000 to Texas Rangers players and staff during the 2020 pandemic, right out of his pocket, not to mention another $200,000 donation he made to South Korea during the same time. Before and after the money he earned as a big leaguer, this is the type of character that Shin Su Chu continued to maintain and demonstrate. But despite his generosity, fortune wasn't always on Chu's side. In 2007, he missed the majority of his age 24 season due to Tommy John surgery, an injury commonly associated with hard-throwing pitchers. He missed out on Cleveland's run to Game 7 of the ALCS, and it put his entire future as a big leaguer in doubt, with odds already stacked against him as a South Korean player. In 2008, though, he finally regained his footing at the MLB level in June. And before we go any further, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Thank you to today's sponsor, BetterHelp. Starting therapy can be very uncomfortable. You know, taking that first step and doing face-to-face -face confrontation can be a troubling factor for a lot of people. BetterHelp is a great gateway for those who might be in that category. You can do everything from the comfort of your home. To get started, you fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs, and then you'll get matched with your therapist in most cases within 48 hours or less. So if you think you might benefit from therapy, consider BetterHelp. You can click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash jollyolive. That link gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp, so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. Thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to the video. 
In his first real go at substantial playing time, Chu thrived. He hit over 300 and nearly 100 games, including an absolutely monstrous month of September, where his average soared over 400, leading him to claim AL Player of the Month honors in his rookie season. Cleveland was entering a dark era for their franchise, missing the playoffs in each of the next six seasons, but one consistent bright spot was taking form right before their eyes in Shinsu Chu. 2009 marked his first full season, and Chu did not disappoint, recording the first 20 home run, 20 stolen base season by an Asian-born player in MLB history. In regards to his landmark feat, Chu said in an interview that he thought he could do better than this, or should I say, I hope I can do better. He made good on that wish going 2020 again in the 2010 season as well, with Hanley Ramirez being the only other player in baseball to do so in back-to-back -back seasons from 2009 to 2010. Though Cleveland remained directionless, Chu received MVP votes for the first time. In the midst of his breakout performance in MLB, Chu joined his home country's team for the World Baseball Classic and helped South Korea achieve their highest placing in any tournament in history, narrowly losing out to Team Japan in the final by a score of 5-3. Chu hit over 300 with a pair of home runs, capitalizing on his first chance to play in front of his home country since he was a teenager. Years later, he'd play in the KBO for the first time, but we'll get to that. From 2008 to 2012, the prime of his playing days in Cleveland, Shin Su Chu was one of just 15 MLB players with at least four seasons hitting to a 125 OPS+, plus, a cumulative hitting mark that was 25% better than league average annually. Of players with at least 2,500 plate appearances in this five-year window, his 384 on base percentage was seventh among all MLB hitters, and his 135 cumulative OPS plus was top 15. Playing for a squad that was mediocre year in and year out, Chu fell under the radar more often than not, but had already established himself as the most accomplished Korean position player in MLB's history before turning 30 years old. But pretty soon after that 2012 season concluded, Cleveland traded Chu away in a massive three-team trade that brought their club Brian Shaw and Trevor Bauer, among others. Chu ended up in Cincinnati, where he'd put together one of the best seasons of his career and helped the Reds make the playoffs for the third time in four years to that point. Chu's 423 on base percentage in 2013 was the highest single season mark of his entire career and second in the National League that season only to his teammate, former MVP Joey Votto. Speaking of Votto, he and Chu cultivated an entertaining friendship during their lone year as teammates, one that stretched to 2017 when they bounced off each other for players' weekend jersey ideas. Basically, the short of this story is is that Chu and Vado were so neck and neck in on-base percentage throughout the entirety of this 2013 season, just trying to outdo each other. And this led to an analogy where they were talking about dogs at a dog racetrack and how the dogs are supposed to chase after a rabbit and that's what makes them race. This was, of course, an analogy from Joey Vado because why wouldn't it be? It's ludicrous and weird and I absolutely love it. Vado called Chu the rabbit that he was chasing around and Chu responded by telling him that in Korean, rabbit is pronounced as Taki, not Takis, Taki spelled like this. And then they called each other Taki 1 and Taki 2, and those ended up being their Players Weekend nicknames, which I thought was absolutely awesome. Outside of his rabbit-related antics, Shin Su Chu carved out one of the finest seasons of baseball by an Asian-born player. Since 2000, Chu is just one of seven players to hit 20 home runs, steal 20 bases, and draw over 100 walks in a single season, achieving a trifecta of power, speed, and plate discipline that not many have seen in the modern era of baseball. He shares company on this list with the likes of Mike Trout and Bryce Harper, as well as Bobby Abreu, who did so seven seasons in a row in his career. Chu's Reds did fall in the 2013 wildcard game, with his solo home run being one of just two runs that Cincinnati could muster up in this disappointing loss. Still, Chu had bigger fish to fry, finally on the doorstep of the coveted MLB free agency ticket he had been waiting for nine years deep into his career. He entered an admittedly stacked free agent class specifically for outfielders that offseason, including the likes of Jacoby Ellsbury, who we actually just talked about in a separate video, as well as Curtis Granderson, Nelson Cruz, and Carlos Beltran. The bidding war went decently high for someone who was considered decently low profile like Shinsu Chu. Many were predicting something of a misfire on whatever team ended up paying out a huge number for him, though that more so ended up being the case for the Yankees and Jacoby Ellsbury. Speaking of those Yankees, Chu almost ended up as a New York Yankee. He actually turned down the team during his free agency saga when Scott Boris tried to squeeze more money out of the squad after they made an initial offer of seven years and $140 million. Shinsu Chu proceeded to take the deal from the Texas Rangers worth the same amount of years and $10 million less than the Yankees offer. Many scoffed at Chu getting this much money in the first place with his defensive liabilities and unfavorable splits against lefty pitching. For reference to this point in his career, Chu had been Jim Tomei against right-handed pitching and Adam Frazier against left-handed pitching. No disrespect to Adam Frazier, but he's not Jim Tomei. 
Early on, it looked like those critics were valid in their comments. Chu was simply league average offensively with an 100 OPS plus in over 120 games in 2014, as the injury-plagued Rangers tumbled back into the basement of the American League West with a 95 loss season. Seriously, this team was more than snake bitten. They set an MLB record with 40 different pitchers used during the regular season and over 25 different injured list trips for their rostered players. Fangraphs actually wrote an article where they determined that the 2014 Rangers lost just under 2,100 days of playing time to their injuries, which was 700 more days than the second worst team and easily the worst of any team in MLB history. This was the most injury plagued team ever, and Chu wasn't exempt from this either, as he ended the season prematurely needing both ankle and elbow surgeries. But he bounced back in a major way in 2015 with 22 home runs, a 125 OPS plus, and a trip back to the playoffs with the Rangers after going worse to first. Hamstring tightness, a right calf strain, and back inflammation did rob Chu of his third season in Texas though. Three years into this contract, it was already looking like a dud, and Texas very much needed Chu to be more productive in the back half, which, as most baseball fans know, is pretty rare when it comes to these massive contracts. But Chu did stay on the field for at least 140 games, and he did hit at least 20 home runs in each of the next three seasons, even making his first career all-star team in 2018. He also had some milestones along the way. He set the Rangers club record with a 52-game on-base streak that barely got any coverage when it was happening, and he also surpassed Hideki Mat Sui as the all-time leader for home runs among Asian-born players in MLB. He failed to top a single win above replacement in three of his first four years on the deal, but finished with productive seasons leading into 2020. Finally, after the pandemic-shortened season, Chu decided to finish his playing days back in South Korea, despite fielding a decent amount of offers from MLB teams heading into 2021. Chu was set to play in the KBO for the first time in his career, and in the three years since he made that transition, he's continued to rake, going 2020 again in his first season there, and posting an above league average OPS and double digit home runs in his trio of seasons overseas. Even at 40 years old last year, he still managed a 377 on base percentage and 30 extra base hits on the year. All signs point to him playing again at the age of 41 in 2024. And that's where this story currently lies. Chu's legacy, both on and off the field, is simply remarkable. Only eight hitters reached base safely more times than Shinsu Chu in the 2010s, making him one of the best hitters of an entire decade. This is a list that includes Freddie Freeman, Mike Trout and Joey Votto, and I gotta thank Foolish Baseball for this great stat. Even without the shiny accolades, it's astonishing to think how far above the pack Chu was to his South Korean position player contemporaries. Players like G-Man Choi, Ha Sang Kim, and Jung Hoo Lee surely will hope to follow in his footsteps, but in terms of guys whose careers are set and done at this point, no one even comes close to Shin Soo Chu. He's truly one of a kind, and always deserved more of a spotlight than he ended up getting, so I hope this short video can serve as that testament. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and if if you did, leave a like on the video and subscribe to the Jolly Olive channel. We're trying to hit 100k and get that silly little plaque in the background of my video, so if you can help out, I'd appreciate it. That'll do it for this video, and I'll see you guys next time.